What would happen if the Fed and the ECB eliminated 90% of the money that they pumped into the banks over the last decade? Talk about financial market chaos. That's what we'll discuss here today. This is going to affect everybody, your retirement account, your portfolio, and potentially even your job. Welcome truth seekers. You've landed in the right place. I want to bring you what others simply can't. So join this grassroots movement of nearly 300,000 people. Hit that subscribe and the notification beside it so that we can conquer this together. Now, speaking of which, you've come here for the truth and that's what I intend to give you. The very first thing we're going to lead up into what's happening with the Fed and the ECB that marks a potential change in the policy that they've had over the last few years. And the thing you got to know first is why? Why? Well, it's inflation. Inflation is too hot and now they are addressing it specifically. And how is that the case? Well, they printed a lot of money. That is the expansion of the currency supply. And here we have it. They may suggest that they need to rein that in and that's going to cause a problem. Let me show you why. Here we have it. The very first thing is the money markets. And you look at that It's basically cash equivalents. And a lot of investors just keep money on the sidelines here waiting for something to happen. Okay, I'm gonna you know, deploy that cash. I'm gonna make this um, you know, an investment that I wanna put in, but not right now. So I'm gonna keep the cash here. Well, the change has been over the last two weeks that this has declined. So now people are putting their money into, let's say AI stocks. They're putting it into you know, Nvidia and all this other stuff. And that's going on and that has been a change over these last two weeks specifically. Then we get into this and the chart just explaining the fact that, again, in a different way, looking at the same information, that people are not putting their money into those money market funds. The savings rate is down. We're seeing people that are going in and feeling more confident about what's happening in the financial system. And then we have this, okay, very important. The, um, essentially the deposits have started to, believe it or not, decrease at this time because people are investing in these stocks okay they're putting money into stocks and risk assets and they don't want that safety and what they had before now we get into the big part of this video which is all about how the potential right now the potential for a world of hurt over the past decade the federal reserve and the ECB, they have been fighting off sluggish price growth and low borrowing costs by flooding the banking system with cash. So everything that's happened has not been the result of strength. You look at the stock market, it has done extremely well, but not because of some positive element, it's because they've been pumping cash in. Okay, they call this quantitative easing. It involves purchasing massive amounts of bonds from banks, thereby increasing liquidity and stimulating economic activity. But things are shifting in the economy. We're facing high inflation, increasing interest rates, and that the previously necessary extra liquidity is becoming a burden rather than a benefit. And you could see how that is really the case right now. You, you have a balance sheet that was near nine trillion that is going to have an impact. You know, you, you create this moral hazard. You create a problem by generating all this cash out of thin air. You send it out into the financial markets. And of course, you're going to get disruptions and dislocations. So there's this paper from the Federal Reserve, and it suggests that the Fed and the ECB might need to reduce their money, uh, monetary reserves in the banking system. The Fed alone could reduce total reserves from their current $6 trillion to somewhere between $600 billion and $3.3 trillion. The ECB would shrink its own liquidity from €4.1 trillion Euro to as low as €521 billion. Euro. I don't know if they're going to do that, but essentially they are suggesting if you want to slow down inflation, this is what you're going to have to do. And you got to realize this. This is coming from the Federal Reserve. So it's not as if it's some analyst or you and I talking about it. Yeah, they got to reduce this. They have to, you know, actually dry up liquidity out there. And we got to deal with a world of hurt for a little while. I'll show you the actual um, article itself that references the paper. 
But for now, I wanted to explain it a little bit further. What does this mean for the financial markets? Well, I think we have to understand that these actions could help combat inflation and could stabilize economies in the long term. It is needed. It would be fantastic. Are they going to do it? You and I know the answer to that. But where it gets tricky is that a sudden reduction in the available availability of, of money, of, of cash, of, you know, this, I, would, I, sh I call it money, but you know what I'm talking about, it's currency, could also cause some jitters in the markets. And when I say jitters, I, I really mean some new underpants that it will be needed. Less money in the system means less money available for lending. That would slow down economic growth. This could potentially trigger declines in the stock market and increase the cost of borrowing for both individuals and businesses. Okay, but it all depends on how markets react. A reduction in liquidity might lead banks to sell off less liquid and lower quality assets that could further destabilize the financial markets. U.S. Treasuries, German bonds, known for the liquidity and safety, may be uh, command the premium, this could disincentivize banks from swapping them for deposits at the central bank. So you see that, right? There are so many potential ramifications. We don't know how it will all unfold, but that's the real gist of this all. So we can see where the money's moving. That's why I showed you in the first place. And then you could look at what the Federal Reserve and the ECB, the two big boys, what they plan on doing and so how will that impact the next part stick with me i want to show you here it is by the way this is just the um, article coming from reuters but if you see what the central banks are doing they're increasing interest rates they're basically doing all the same thing looking at the bank of england as an example increased interest rates to five percent at you know just a year and a half ago Nobody said that this would happen. And here we are. They're tightening up. They are tightening at a time in which the markets still don't believe it. So here we go. The next part. This is related to my favorite, Janet Yellen. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen sees lower U.S. recession risk, says the consumer slowdown is needed. Further slowdown in price gains is in the pipeline, she says. China is being more constructive in debt talks and improves their standing wonderful so i have to say that you know we definitely want to agree with everything that janet yellen says because there will never be a crisis in her lifetime on the chance of a recession she said my odds of it if anything have gone down because look at the resilience of the labor market and the inflation is coming down i'm not going to say it's not a risk because the fed is tightening policy so she makes the obvious notion here that there is still a risk of a problem and if you're going to dry up hundreds of billions of dollars or trillions of dollars in liquidity well you might face some hard times that's what i think we'll see look at the other central banks the uk switzerland norway turkey all hiked on thursday and in cases here 50 basis points so it's not necessarily just these small rises in the increase uh, increases in the interest rates but i see that coming quite a bit look at this leading economic indicators it's a group of all these different types of indicators together and when we put that as a whole it can give us a little bit of insight and they make it clear that the u.s leading economic indicators continue to signal a recession within the next 12 months so those numbers are all adding up we're at the worst we've been in a long time showing you this in different charts same thing the leading economic indicators back to the levels uh where was that i mean we we saw that back in 2018 which looked um not so nice back in 2020 as well here we are heading down further and further and this is just in a year over year look same data look it's all showing the same thing economic indicators are piling up left right and center and so you have that problem when you mirror this with the real gdp um it is very clear that when these leading economic indicators start to decline so does the gdp that is quite obvious you need to protect yourself you need to understand the financial world in a basic sense what it means to you 
And so I talked about alternative assets because you don't want to throw all your money into your uh, 401k and so on. I talk about alternative assets. You watch this video, you'll know all about it. Click there. I'll see you there.